Welcome to everybody that is here. We're so glad to have you. It is 1135, so we will go ahead and get rolling. Um, if you have not yet muted your device, please go ahead and do so. It will just prevent any um, feedback and echoing and that kind of thing. Let me see. Um, so again, welcome to everybody. We're, we're glad to have you here. There's a lot you could be doing with your lunch hour, and so we're glad that you are, are joining us here. My name is Kathy Lavoy, and I am the current board president of the Women's Resource Center Board of Directors. Um, we've got um, some other board of director members here, so it's really good to see everybody. Let's see. Um, Please do join in the chat. Um, our, our question is, if you could skip work for a day, what would you do? We've got some really good answers. A lot of them outside. Um, people would spend their time. And um, do want to acknowledge that the event is being recorded. So anything you say can and will be um, captured for posterity. I um, want to recognize, I don't know that we have any elected officials and those running for office. Anybody on the call today? This is Meredith Edwards. I'm the elected clerk of Superior Court for Alamance County. Wonderful. Thank you for being here, Meredith. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. Just another quick reminder that as you're joining, mute your phone or device. Um, and keep popping those answers into the chat. Um, and I think that we will, um, Sam will be using the chat a little bit too. So um, we will keep a monitor on that as, the, as our event goes on. I want to recognize our sponsors for today. Our visionary sponsor, LabCorp. Our sustaining sponsors, Glen Raven and Impact Alamance, and let me see if Marcy, Marcy, are you on here? I see you have an announcement. Okay, if we see her jump on, we'll, we'll put her on the hot seat. Our supporting sponsor is Exceed Technology, and I see Barbara on here. Yes, I'm on here. Good morning, everybody. Or I should, well, yeah, it's still morning. See, I almost thought I messed that up. Um, <laughs> I would love to be outside in the sunshine. I'm hoping that we get warmer temperatures. That's my wish for the weekend. I don't want all the snow they say we're getting. I've, I've had enough. So if you uh, don't review your phone bill at your office or your business, that's something Exceed will help you with. We'll do a free assessment for everybody and we can usually lower the cost for your phones and your phone system and give you a better quality service and give you all kinds of different features. So we do have a lot around here in North Carolina. We are in all 50 states as well as Canada. So if you know anybody that needs some phones, let us know, we'd be happy to help. And thank you for having me today. Thank you, Barbara, and we're always glad to have you with us. Thanks for joining. I'd like to recognize our major sponsors. Thank you to Elon University, Proponent Federal Credit Union, Always Best Care Senior Services, and I see Samantha here. Hi guys, um, just a quick announcement. Um, like everywhere else we're hiring. Um, I am looking for a full-time recruiter here in the office. So hiring our caregivers uh, to go in the home with our seniors. I'm also looking for a full or part-time nurse if anybody knows anybody. Um, and I will put that in the chat uh, with my phone number on there. So just keep us in mind. Thank you. Great, thank you. And thanks for being here. The Elements Chamber of Commerce, um, Prime Personnel Resources Incorporated. And we've got Melissa with True Lion Federal Credit Union. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, I am um, at the branch on University Drive in Burlington. Um, True Lion is now serving um, Alamance County in four locations. Um, our newest location is now in Graham. Uh, we also have a location in Mebbin and two in Burlington. Um, so we would love to uh, be able to help 
any of you, if you know anyone that has a financial need, uh, please reach out to us. And, uh, we'd love to help. Thanks for having me. Great. Thank you, Melissa. And I have lost my, here we go. Um, I'd like to thank our corporate sponsors, Milestone Wealth Management, Twin Lakes Community, Katie Smith Photography, and Gilliam Bell Mosier. Thank you all so much for your support and for allowing us to do at the Women's Resource Center what we do. We really appreciate having you and couldn't do it without you. Want to recognize again the board of directors um, and our supporters. Um, as you all may remember, the Women's Resource Center moved to not have members. So anybody that participates with us, donates with us, we are now calling you supporters. Um, and that includes anybody that has attended a program, given their time, given their money. Um, we are no longer a membership organization, but we are now a supported organization. Um, so thanks to our supporters, thanks to our amazing board of directors. Um, we've got a great group of very uh, uh, hardworking um, board of directors. Please do mark your calendars for our next Working Women's Wednesday, which will be February 23rd. Shanice Sellers, uh, who's a financial advisor, and she's the director of the African American Cultural Arts and History Center. So really looking forward to having her um, talk to us next month, February 23rd, 2022. And again, thanks everybody for joining. Please pop a um, answer to our spark question in the chat. If you could skip work for a day, what would you do with that day? I'm gonna turn it over to our fearless leader, Susan Watson, the executive director of Women's Resource Center in Alamance County. Hi everybody, it's great to be here today. Um, I'm not sure I'm fearless. I, I live in fear quite a bit actually. <laughs> Um, it looks like we are all under a theme of self-care today and thinking about being outside. Uh, a lot of us, when we answered that question um, about what would we do if we had the day off, uh, we all know we don't take enough days off and it uh, looks like it, all of us are um, craving some warmer weather. I personally have enjoyed the snow the last couple of weekends, um, but I am ready to, to get outside and see some some warmth and some sunshine. Again, thanks to all of our sponsors uh, for supporting this event. We could not do it without you. We really do need the support of our business community and our individuals, just like Kathy said. <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment to um, tell you just a little bit about the Women's Resource Center and what all has been going on behind the scenes. Um, over the last few months, we had a staff change and we had, <clears throat> excuse me, um, worked through that over the holidays. And we'd like to welcome April Snell to our team today. April is our new uh, client resource counselor and we are excited to have her on board. She's already doing great work with our clients. She's working with our, our grad students, Echo Bloom and Sheila Washington. Um, it feels pretty good to have a full house on staff here right now. Um, it gives a different energy to all of us, and I'm just grateful for, for our volunteers and our staff. Um, I think the biggest news that I have right now is about spring and the Herb Festival. Uh, our committee started work last week. We are already on the calendar at First Presbyterian Church. It is April 21st through the 23rd, so please mark your calendars. We're going to need all hands on deck. Um, after not having it in 2020 and having a limited version in 2021, um, we're going all out. We can't tell you right now if it's going to be inside the church or outside in the parking lot under a big tent or a combination of both. Um, we are actively planning it and want this one to be the best one yet. Um, by count, Heidi Norwick, I think this will be the 24th year of the Herb Festival. And so we are following a path that uh, you and Becky Mock started on this fundraiser and we appreciate you being a part of, of that plant committee. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the other news I have um, outside, you can get our website and see all the workshops and things that are coming up. Um, we'll talk about the next Working Women's Wednesday at the end of this one. But we've got some exciting news going on. We're preparing today uh, to be to be doing a little bit of publicity in the community. And we're honored to be a part of the Burlington Magazine in February and the West Burlington Magazine in March. So look for us there, share it with your friends. When you see it, we'll be sharing it also through social media. Uh, it's a little bit about our story and how we impact the lives of women and their families in the community every single day. We're honored to be able to hear the stories of these brave women that come into our office that are challenging multiple life transitions, overcoming obstacles to their success. And we want to share that story far and wide this spring. So if you can help us out with that, we sure would appreciate it. Uh, but right now, I think I want to turn uh, and talk a little bit about our speaker. Um, looks like she already knows some of you on the call. Her reputation has preceded her. Samantha Murray, otherwise known as Sam, is the recruiting coordinator for OT Growth Partners. She's with one of the largest independently owned and operated Orange Theory fitness franchise groups based in Chapel Hill. She's a certified yoga instructor, personal trainer, and group fitness coach. If you know her, you know she's passionate about all things health and wellness. Oh, she's a coffee lover. I've heard that. And we're coffee lovers here in our office. <laughs> her daily mantra is you can't pour from an em empty cup. And that really says, is a testament to the work that she does. She helps people fill their cup emotionally, physically. And we are going to turn this program over to her today and let her give more of her introduction and talk about her work and how we can improve our own health and wellness. So please join me in welcoming Samantha Murray. Thanks so much for being here today, Sam. Thank you all for having me. I was so honored and excited um, when Kathy reached out and asked me to speak. I know a lot of you on this call, I'm working on sharing my screen as I talk, so forgive me um, if I'm looking in multiple directions, but I think I just successfully did it. I think if you can see the pink and white screen, we're good to go. Yes. Um, I don't know why I chose pink. I think I'm hoping for spring, so we're going to go with that. But I am really excited to be here. Uh, this is something I'm really passionate about. I do not consider myself an expert on any of these things. Uh, ironic, when Kathy reached out, I was like, I feel like I'm plummeting in the area of self-care myself. So maybe this is a good little refresher and reminder for me um, to kind of regroup and strap in um, and make more time for myself during my busy schedule. Uh, so thank you all for having me today. I'm excited to spend some time with you, hopefully give you some tips and tricks uh, that you can implement into your days as well. If you see me looking in a couple different directions, I have two little screens going. I'm going to watch the chat box as we talk today as well. So throw questions that you might have in there and we will go from here. Uh, I always like to give a little roadmap of where we're going. Those of you who know me know I'm a planner, probably to a fault. Um, I can plan and plan and plan, which is coming in a lot of handy right now as I plan a wedding. But here's where we're going today. We're going to do a little introduction. I'll tell you about me. Um, we'll get present here. That's one of the things I always like to do when I do any sort of presentation. We all have a thousand things going on right now. Uh, so I want to make sure that we're all here, although some of us might be eating our lunches. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about my definitions of words that I'll throw around as we chat today. Check in where, where some of us are at during this conversation. Chat a little bit about wellness. I'll share some of my tips and tricks and different things that I incorporate. And then I will throw out a little challenge for all of you and leave some time for question and answers. Um, I don't want it to be all of me talking at you. Like I said, I'm not an expert in any of this. I have my yoga certification. I have my personal training certification, but that does not mean that I am the self-care wellness expert by any means. So 
to start things off, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Samantha Murray. Most people call me Sam. I was born and raised in Massachusetts. My entire family is actually still there. Um, they chose to stay in the cold. That's their fault, not mine. Um, I came down to Elon for school and graduated in 2015 with a degree in human service studies. I was blessed to get to know a lot of people in the community um, while I was a human services major. Interned uh, with Crossroads. I interned with the district attorney's office when I was a senior. Um, which led me to move back to Massachusetts and work for the DA's office in the state where I was from as a victim witness advocate for about a year and a half um, while I also obtained my master's degree in criminal justice from UMass Lowell. Um, working as a full-time victim witness advocate at the age of 22, working with the domestic violence cases, sexual assault cases, and child abuse cases quickly taught me that while I loved helping people 22 years old was not the age I wanted to burn out at. So I quickly switched jobs and moved back down south after one winter in Massachusetts. Talk about wanting to be outside. Um, and I came back to North Carolina to work at Elon, um, where I landed in the Dina student's office working as the first coordinator for student concerns and outreach on campus. That title and role has been restructured a lot since I was in that position. Um, and then I switched over to athletics where I was an academic advisor for student athletes for, I think, almost three school years. Um, after COVID, I did a lot of soul searching and realized that, well, I loved the jobs that I was in and interacting with students at Elon and essentially doing a lot of what was social work, but not with a social work degree and helping people where they were at in their journey. At that point, it was college students. Um, fitness was my passion and I wanted to do that full time. I just didn't know what that looks like with um, a house and a dog and needing benefits and I couldn't quit my job and just teach three yoga classes a week and make a living. So I found Orange Theory and they were hiring a full-time recruiting coordinator in Chapel Hill. Um, so I work for OT Growth Partners, which is um, a partnership group based in North Carolina. I do the recruiting for 18 North Carolina fitness studios and uh, if I can do math correctly, eight Indiana studios, eight Wisconsin studios, and three Iowa studios. Orange Theory is a boutique group fitness company. I have fallen in love with it um, in my year with them, and I talk to fitness coaches all day long and interview them and place them at studios to get them hired. Um, so I've kind of transformed my skills of talking and working with people into recruiting, um, and now I get to do it for a fitness company. So kind of combining passions and skill sets into something that I didn't know was a career when I started college at Elon. Um, aside from that, outside of work, I am a dog mom. This is my crazy dog, Miley. Um, anybody who has seen us walking has probably seen a lot more pulling than walking. She is currently at boarding school, um, getting trained. Best investment of my life. Um, this picture is also my fiance, Tracy. We got engaged over Christmas. Um, we are both Elon alums and planning a wedding in October in Greensboro. I'm a skincare consultant, yoga instructor, fitness coach, um, big family person, and definitely a Boston sports fan. That's not included on here. Didn't want to write it in case that offended anybody. So this is kind of a little nutshell of who I am. Um, none of that equals self-care guru, but uh, <laughs> a lot of knowledge in that area based on the experiences that I have. So um, activity for us to get here. I just threw a lot of information about me at you and you're probably racking your brains about who you are and <laughs> what we're going to talk about today and how that has anything to do with who I am or what's happening in the world right now. But I want to pause for a second. We're going to do a quick activity and I want you to, you can write this down or you can just think about it. And this is just to get you grounded. I want you to think of, not think of, I want you to think of or notice five things that you see. And after you've recognized those things, think of four things that you currently feel. They don't have to be emotions. I want you to think of things that you physically feel. So maybe even like the seat that you're on right now or the clothes on your skin. Three things you hear. 
could even be the sound of your own breath or the fan on your computer screen, which mine is like going 100 miles an hour right now. Two things that you smell. For those of you who are eating lunch right now, this might be an easier one. And one thing that you taste. And then as you do that, or if you finish that, just take a big deep breath and let it out. <sighs> then you're welcome to throw in the chat how that made you feel, or if you're like, why did we just do that? Um, or something that you noticed about that activity. This is kind of just a trick. A lot of people will use this for... Um, people who have panic attacks or anxiety, but I use it as a way to just get really present. Um, it, I find that during my day when I'm going hundred miles an hour, I don't often take time to notice what's going on right now. So five things that I hear, like had I noticed the noise of the fan of my computer, unless I had paused to actually think about what I'm hearing, I don't know that I would have actually noticed that had I paused. Um, so yeah, awesome. Somebody said helps focus on the presentation, reminded me to breathe deeper, centering, much more centered. Awesome. So I wanted to incorporate this because I know we all have a lot of things going on. This presentation is happening in the middle of your day. Um, you're probably thinking about a thousand things. And so just to get us all present, myself included, and then we'll go from there. And the next slide, we're going to talk about definitions. And when I hear the word definitions, it brings me back to school. And that grabs my anxiety probably back up a little bit. But definitions, these are not going to be like your flashcard definitions for a vocab test. They're going to be more like words you're going to hear me say in the next little bit together that I want you to know what I mean when I say them does not mean that I went and looked these words up in the dictionary and I'm gonna give you a textbook definition. It's just when I say this, this is what I'm referring to. Um, and you might have a different definition of these words, but something we're gonna talk a lot about today is self-care. So I'm a big quote junkie. Um, what, the way I define self-care, there's a lot of different ways I define it, but for today's purposes, this is one of my favorite ways to look at self-care. So doing what you must do for yourself so that when you show up in whatever context that means to work, to your home, to your friends, to your family, to your kids, to your partner, whoever, you're giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. So if you want to take a picture of that or take a, write it down, take a note of that, whatever. If I mention self-care today, that's what we're talking about. Giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. And then wellness. I did look up this one. This one's a little longer. The World Health Organization defines wellness as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So this isn't just that you're ill or that you're not ill. So it could just be a number of different things. And so living in and processing and trying to improve your overall quality of life. You can type wellness into Google and it'll give you millions of different results. <laughs> But a lot of times when we think of wellness, we think of sickness. And so I don't want us to think of it as that. I want to think of how do we get to overall wellness and improving quality of life. Mindfulness, this is a buzz word right now. Um, I try to not stay away from buzzwords, but I want us to talk a little bit about mindfulness today because it'll it'll connect with emotional wellness when we talk about that later. But mindfulness is not about living life in slow motion. A lot of people think that um, meditating and being slow and really calm and 
I used to joke um, with my yoga students that we don't go to yoga because we're like slow and calm. It's because we're crazy that we show up to yoga. Um, but it's about enhancing focus and awareness, both in work and in life. It's about stripping away distractions and staying on track with individual as well as organizational goals. At any point in time, if anybody has any questions on these, feel free to let them know, let me know as well in the chat. And then this is my favorite, well-being. I broke this one down pretty simple. You are a being, you're a human being. A well-being is someone who is a being that is well, plain and simple. Another thing that I like to remind people is don't forget you're a human being, you're not a human doing. You're here to be, you're not here to do 10,000 things. All right, now that we've gone over some definitions, talked about a few words, a lot of words actually on the screen, which is against like every presentation, like rule of thumb in the world. I want you to either on a scrap piece of paper or on a note on your computer, or on your phone, wherever you are, just jot down everything that's going through your mind right now. I'm going to time you for 60 seconds. It's not a race to see whose list is longer, but I'm going to just give you 60 seconds to like brain dump. You have about 30 more seconds. All right, there's your minute. And then what I want you to do is just flip that paper over or exit out of that screen on your computer. And we'll get back to that at the end of the presentation or at the end of your lunch hour or whenever you decide to come back to it or stick it in the recycling bin for later. <laughs> I do that sometimes and I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed and I can't focus right now and I need to just disconnect from what's going on in my head. And so give yourself a minute to just get it all out, jot it down on a piece of paper, move on. Odds are you probably won't come back to that list. Um, and if you do, that's fine too. There's nothing bad about that as well. But, and if anybody's like, I needed a notebook and not just a scrap piece of paper, then probably you're like me and have a mile long to-do list as well. But I want to quickly just touch on the eight dimensions of wellness, and then we're going to dive into a lot of these individually and talk about tips and tricks that I'm going to give you. And this is where I really want things to be more um, back and forth, because I don't want to just give you what I do, because that might not apply to your life or your routine or what works for you. Because with self-care, it's not about what Sam does for self-care or what Kathy does for self-care or what Heidi does for self -care. Like That might not work for you. Um, it's about what you're going to do for yourself. So eight dimensions of wellness. This is another thing that if you Google, there might be some that come up with six dimensions, seven, eight, nine, ten. There is also some that looks like pie charts. This is my favorite diagram um, just because it shows that they ebb and flow and they're all interconnected. Um, I don't love the diagrams that show them as equal pie pieces, like a piece of pizza that's cut perfectly, because for some of us, they're not equal and every day they're different. You could have a day where your physical wellness is like top notch, but maybe that also means your social wellness is that tank is a little bit empty or your emotional wellness is top notch, but physical is just on the back burner right now or environmental is on the back burner. Um, so this is my favorite diagram of the eight dimensions of wellness because they're all interconnected and they're all just kind of weaving together. We'll also talk about that a little bit more as well. But 
This is something that each dimension can be named something different depending on who um, is presenting on it or whose version of the dimensions you're using. Um, for the purpose of today, these are the eight that I'm gonna talk about. Um, it's just the version that I prefer. You're welcome to create your own. Um, so social, physical, occupational, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, environmental, and financial. And if you do have a piece of paper or somewhere where you can write these down um, and you want to write down all eight and then just give yourself a little bit of space next to each one. Um, in a minute, I want you to kind of just jot down or as we talk, like something that you do for each one of these that you're already doing. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of see which areas might need a little work and which areas we're already doing really well in. Um, because I don't want to just talk about the things that we need to do better at. Uh, that's not the goal of today. Um, I can tell you off of the bat, like physical as somebody who works in the fitness industry, like physical wellness for me is something that I excel at. That doesn't mean I'm like the perfect person in the gym, but that's where I excel. Financial wellness, not my strength at all. <laughs> um, budgeting and wedding planning, definitely not my strength. Um, but we can talk about these different dimensions and we can talk about how you balance all of them. And it doesn't mean they're going to be perfect every single day. So what does that look like for me? What do each of these look like? And this is kind of how I'm going to define them so that you can see and maybe start writing down what you're already doing for each of those dimensions. So for me, social. Social wellness is finding a good community finding a good solid group of friends or people, like your people that you go to, whether that's for date nights with friends, um, whether that's, for me, it's my like group, group fitness friends, the gym that I coach at and that I work at, um, the people there are awesome. Um, it's also FaceTime dates with friends. I have a lot of friends that are all over the country. Um, which is fun, but also <laughs> takes a lot of coordinating and isn't as much meeting up in person. Um, social wellness doesn't necessarily mean just scrolling on social media and checking in on people. It's intentional. Um, for some people, it might be social media and that might be what fills their social wellness tank. Um, we can go down a whole social media rabbit hole on these, but social wellness really comes down to community and the people that you connect with and that connection where it is like genuine connection, not just liking things or text every now and then. Um, so social wellness is one of them. So if you've thought of something that you do in this category, you can write that down. If it's a, a mom's group that you're a part of or a group of friends that you hang out with regularly, a church small group, something like that, social wellness. Physical wellness, um, this is the category that a lot of people instantly think has to be working out. Um, that's what I get normally when I talk to people, especially because of what I do, people instantly think working out. Um, sometimes for me, working out is not physical wellness. Sometimes that drains other aspects of my tank. Um, it's also nutrition, it's also water. Pull out my handy nanny water bottle tracker to keep track of this, my screen like blurs out anything that's not my face, um, to keep track of my water throughout the day. Sleep is physical wellness. I'll talk a little bit more about this and I'll show you some tips and tricks of things I do to track different things in this area of physical wellness. Physical wellness can also simply be getting up from your desk and going for a 15 minute walk every couple of hours instead of sitting in your chair all day long. Um, it can also be adjusting your chair and your desk so that it's actually at the right height for your body and you're not hunching over to like give yourself better posture at your desk. I remember when I was at Elon, I don't know if they still do this, but I know that Tammy Hill is on here and I know that Tammy will know the answer to this question. They would do like desk assessments and come and check to make sure your desk and your chair were at the right spot for your posture. Like how cool is that for your physical wellness to make sure that you're set up for success while at work so that you're not hurting your body while you're sitting there for eight hours a day. 
And we don't often think about things like that as far as physical wellness. We think going and spending an hour at the gym um, or going to an hour long yoga class or going for a one or two mile walk or run. Um, physical wellness can also be walking your dog. If you see me getting dragged down front street, that might be for my physical wellness with my crazy little pup. Um, occupational wellness. This one, we're all here for working women um, in the community, but incorporating mindfulness into the workday. And I'll talk a little bit more about this, how to incorporate different tips and tricks into your day. A lot of this for me personally is setting boundaries. Um, I learned very quickly as a young professional who wanted to say yes and please everybody that I couldn't do emails until midnight and then wake up and successfully show up for everybody at work the next day when I was actually supposed to be there in person. Um, so setting boundaries with emails, with clients, if you work with clients, um, for me with my schedule, um, as a recruiter, when I set interviews, people will respond back and say, oh yeah, I'm free for interviews all day, Saturday and Sunday. Well, I'm not <laughs> like, that's not what I'm going to do. Um, so different aspects of setting boundaries there, incorporating mindfulness into your workday could look like going for a quick walk outside if it's nice out. My office is in Chapel Hill. When I go into the office um, a couple days a week, we have a nice little trail out behind our um, office building. And if I've had like back to back to back meetings and I have a 30 minute break, I'll, I'll grab my headphones and I'll go for a 15 minute walk, throw on my playlist and take a break. I don't have a meeting. I don't need to sit there and drown myself in emails and more work. I need to I need to refill my tank a little bit. Um, spiritual wellness can look like things like church, having a morning routine, having a gratitude practice. Um, that's something I'll share a little bit more on in a second. I have some really good recommendations for journals for that. Um, spiritual wellness is one of those categories where people a lot of times will jump to church or faith being the answer. doesn't have to be. Um, I know when I moved down south, I felt like a lot of times that was the thing that was going to be the answer for that, but that's not always the answer for everybody. So it really is just specific for each person. Um, for me, that's part of my morning routine is Bible study, but that's not everybody's spiritual wellness. That could be a lot of different things. It could be meditating. It could be gratitude. It could be journaling. Um, it could be music. Music could be somebody's spiritual wellness. All of these things are really just specific to each person. Um, so I hope as I'm talking about these, you're starting to think of different things that you do in each of these categories. We're about at the halfway mark of the eight dimensions that we're going to talk about. So hopefully you're jotting some down. And if you want to throw some in the chat, I know Kathy wrote healthy boundaries make or break a professional. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so if there are things, oh, as my whole computer just decided to scroll, there we go. Um, if there are things that are popping up as I say them, please throw them in the chat. That's going to help everybody else um, be better at their self-care as well. So these last four I'll fly through and then I'll share some tips and tricks and we can chat a little bit and then I'll give you a little challenge and we'll go from there. Um, emotional wellness. I um, put on here, find a therapist that you trust. I used to say this to my students. I used to say this to my clients. I think everyone in the world should go to therapy. I think that should be a world requirement, but it's not the life we live in um, right now. But if that's something that applies to you for your wellness routine, I highly encourage you to add that in if you don't already. Um, a mood tracker is something that could be really cool to add to your wellness routine. This is something that I'm working to add this year. Um, just keeping track on how you feel on different days, especially as women. I think that's something that Sometimes we glance over and we don't take into consideration that there's a lot of things that affect our moods. And it's not just that we're females, but um, there's a lot of things that impact our days. And it's not just our emotions, but sometimes just acknowledging those and tracking those can help us figure out how to show up better on the days when maybe our moods are, are better than some other days. Um, journaling, meditation, I'll give some suggestions for that as well. Um, Emotional wellness, be honest with yourself and others. It's okay not to be okay. I love that. Be honest with other people. That goes with their social wellness too. Have your people that you can talk to about your emotions. That's like, we'll talk about pairing dimensions together. That's really, really important. 
um, intellectual wellness. When I first learned about intellectual wellness, I was like, I'm not going back to school. Don't send me back to school. Um, <laughs> after two degrees, I was done. My financial aid and loans will tell me that I'm going to pay for those degrees forever. But puzzles, games, reading books, uh, presentations like this, this is intellectual wellness. You're growing, you're learning. Um, it can be different things like this. Continuing ed credits. Um, for me as a personal trainer, as a group fitness instructor, I have to renew my certifications every two years. Um, doing those things fill my intellectual wellness tank. Um, they're requirements, but gaining that new knowledge is really important. Um, hobbies. I um, am not a hobby person, but because um, for me, fitness is my hobby. So I guess that kind of goes hand in hand. Um, but puzzles are like my thing. I'm like the little person that sits at the table with the little tiny puzzle pieces for hours on end. <laughs> um, environmental wellness. This is one I'll touch on a little bit more. And I loved that everybody put outside as their, not everybody, but a lot of you put outside as your place that you would go if you skipped work for the day. Um, safety is a big part of environmental wellness that a lot of us forget about. Ensuring that you are safe um, is a huge piece of this of this dimension of wellness and then spending time outside. There are so many benefits to being outside. I could go on and on and on just about those. Uh, financial wellness, budget, much as it hurts me, budget, budget, budget. Um, figure out different ways that you can make or save money. Being smart with your money, side hustles. Um, you can kind of combine financial and intellectual learning about money, learning about investing, about saving about stocks, things I know nothing about, um, that might look different for everybody. Donating is another part of financial wellness that I forgot to put on here. So things like that, that you can add in there. So I'm gonna just check the chat really quick. Learn about nonviolent communication has made a big impact on my life. I love that. Podcasts for intellectual wellness, yes. I used to listen to podcasts on my way to work and then I realized that I would just be like tense because I'd be so like, hyped up and ready to go. And I wanted to like do all the things that I was probably adding more stress. So I need to listen to less stressful podcasts. Um, for me, social and emotional wellness are very intertwined. Yes, that's probably for a lot of people, Kathy. That's a really good one. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about just some of the tricks that I said I was going to share. Um, so for physical wellness, these things that I'm going to share are all things I've tried. So Take them, leave them. You don't have to do anything with them. I just wanted to give you things that have worked personally for me. Um, I'm an iPhone user. I love my apps. Tally, um, this app on the left side of your screen is a really good app to track habits. This is from their Google. I just searched. I'm not a book reader or a salad eater, so this is definitely not my screen um, screenshot, but it's a way for you to track. If your goal is to meditate five times a week, you can tally it off on the screen. If you're not a pen and paper person, um, you can add different habits on here to, um, to track, um, water logs is a really good water tracking app. You can track different ounces of water. If you don't have a water bottle that you can track your ounces with on the outside of, um, sleep tracking apps. I use this one down at the bottom to track how many hours of sleep. This is not mine. I do not function on less than eight hours of sleep. Um, so if I got five hours and 46 minutes, I would not be sitting here talking to you at all. Um, and then portion control. This is something that I do for my nutrition. I have probably tried every diet, nutrition claim to fame in the world. Um, this is the plan that works the best for me. I don't feel deprived of any foods that I love. Cheese to me is a category of food that I will never give up. Um, same with carbs. So this is a way that I can make sure that I'm getting all the nutrients that I need and still eat all the foods that I love. Um, so that's what I do for my nutrition. Um, these are just different ways that I track different things. I don't use tally anymore, but I have in the past. I am back to old school pen and paper right now. Just works better for me at the moment. Um, occupational wellness. I stole this from a presentation I've done for a couple different companies about mindfulness in the workplace. Um, little plug if anybody wants. Um, I've done presentations about mindfulness, desk yoga, 
meditation, things like that for businesses. Um, but these are kind of my tricks that I've given at the end of that presentation to people. So 10 breaths, this is old school. <laughs> I remember growing up, my mom used to tell me when I got mad to take 10 deep breaths. That's what that trick is, take 10 deep breaths. Um, three things, sticky note. I don't have my sticky notes at home, so I don't have them. But when I go into the office, I have a stack of sticky notes. And when I get there, what I normally do if I'm practicing this is write down three things that are gonna be my focus for the day not to-do list items, my focus. So if I'm going to focus on patience, productivity, and breathing, or if I'm going to focus on connecting, uh, catching up, I don't know why I'm organizing them in alphabetical with the same letter, but, um, and emails, like just organizing kind of what my focus for the day is and making it three things, not specific as like responding to all my emails or organizing my calendar. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty, just three things to focus on. It could also be three intentions for the day. Um, my favorite trick, and I'm trying to implement this myself, is the no email first mindset. So first, when you wake up in the morning, no email first, do something else. If that's not an issue for you, but maybe you're the person who goes into the office and you open your computer and the first thing you do is open your email, Instead of doing that, maybe you open your calendar. Maybe you go into the office and you turn on your computer and you go and you put your lunch in the fridge and you make your coffee first. Or you're, you work remote, which I would say it's almost harder to incorporate mindfulness when you're working remote because you have no balance between where is work and where is home. Um, you have a set time when you start checking your email, say, okay, at nine o'clock is when I turn my email or I open my email on my phone or on my computer. The afternoon slump, one minute trick. Um, this is a little trick I learned. I don't even remember when, I think when I was working at the courthouse um, in Massachusetts, my office was in the basement of the courthouse. We got no sunlight. I always thought it was 10 PM because it was just dark in our office. And the afternoon slump was every hour on the hour like I would go and walk up and down the stairs for a whole minute. So I would just do laps up and down the stairs for a minute. And then I'd go back to my cubicle. And then on the next hour, I would go and walk up and down the stairs for a minute, back down to the office. Um, just get up and walk and move and not sit at my desk. That afternoon's time is just harder to get through sometimes. And so this was a way to get me out of, out of that slump. Um, note of appreciation or gratitude. There is a lot of research about how gratitude helps you be more mindful um, and about how expressing that gratitude to other people in turn actually gives you more benefits than it does the person you express that to. So writing out a note of appreciation or gratitude to a colleague or to a friend or to somebody, a stranger even, um, will boost your mindfulness and your self-esteem and your confidence and your gratitude. Um, so this trick is to do that once a day for a month. Um, it can be via email. What I like to do is secret notes. So I'll just leave notes on people's desk at work. Every so often, I did it yesterday. I'm not in the office today. So whoever finds it, they won't know it's from me because I'm not there. Um, I just left it on their desk when I left for the day and they'll find it today when they show up and it'll make their day better and they won't know it's for me. I don't even sign them. I just leave them on their desks and I go on with my day. Um, commute mindfulness. This is something guided meditation on the way to work. If you have a commute, um, if you don't, and like me today, my commute was from my living room to my guest room where my desk is. Didn't really have time to meditate on the way here, but when I drive to Chapel Hill, it's a great opportunity for me to do that. Um, daily affirmation. This is something else I do on a sticky note. If I'm practicing this or if I'm in the habit of practicing this, I will write my affirmation for the day and I'll stick it on a sticky note and put it in the top right hand corner of my screen. And the reason I put it in the top right hand corner of my computer screen is because that is where you go to exit out of everything on your browser or everything that is open on your computer. So when you're frustrated and you want to exit out on that tab, if your affirmation is positivity, 
every time you're mad and you go to exit out of that email or that browser or that page, or you're just frustrated and you need to close out of your calendar, or you've got too many things open and you've got to close things out because your computer's overwhelmed, you're going to see that positivity sticky note on the corner. And then boundaries. We talked about boundaries a little bit as well. Um, no email first. Remote worker on call 24-7. I see that in the chat. Yes, Christy, I know that feeling. Another trick there, if you don't have to have your email on your phone, don't have your email on your phone. That's something I learned. Um, Jackie, have not turned on the car radio in 10 plus years. What? Silence also makes the teenager in the car talk. That's awesome. <laughs> I think if my dad had done that on the way to school in high school, he drove me to school. He was, he taught at my high school. Um, I would have fallen asleep. So I think he had to have the music on or else I would have been asleep when we showed up to school. But no, that's awesome. Sometimes the music can drown out the thoughts and sometimes we need that silence to, to think and process and get ready for the day. So that's awesome, Jackie. Thank you for sharing. Spiritual wellness. This is one thing I said I was going to share. This is called an I am journal. Uh, sorry, no, this is not the I am journal. This is the five minute journal. These are on Amazon five minute journal. I'll throw that in the chat. Um, I am not the journaler that you can give an open notebook to and say free write. That is, that overwhelms me. I need prompts. Um, this is something I used for about three years and I loved it. It gives you prompts for the morning and prompts for night. And it literally takes five minutes. Um, in the morning you answer, I am grateful for you list three things. What would make today great? You list three things. Your daily I am affirmation could be I am enough. I am peaceful. I am tired. Hopefully not. Uh, <laughs> and then at night, five more minutes, you list three amazing things that happened today. And how could today have been better? That's it. There's your journal. That's a spiritual wellness practice. It's affirmation. It's gratitude. It's inspirational will fill your cup. So I wanted to share that just because that's something quick and easy if you're looking to add something into your routine. There is another one called the I Am Journal. It's similar. It also probably takes about five minutes. It's focused more on affirmations than it is on gratitude, but it's also awesome. Emotional wellness, um, mindfulness, meditation, something that we've talked a lot about. Um, these are some of my favorite meditation apps. I thought I would just throw these on here if somebody is interested in adding meditation into their routine. Simple Habit is my favorite. Um, they have a free version. They also have a version, I think, I don't know how much it is. You can pay for the year yearly subscription. It comes out to be like 25 cents a day. So it doesn't, it's nothing crazy. Um, they have all different guided meditations. That is the way I meditate when I do not the type of person that can just sit in silence and uh, successfully meditate for longer than 10 seconds. So I need a guided meditation. Um, so this is my favorite. And so uh, yes, Sheila, I'm glad you like that five minute journal. It's really overwhelming to sit down and just feel like you can journal. Um, so I'm glad you like that. That's awesome. Amazon. Um, but these meditation apps are awesome if anybody is interested in getting into meditation. These are some ones I've tried all of these except for Aura, I think is the only one I haven't tried. Most of them have free versions. I think most of them are available for Android and Apple. Simple Habit is my favorite. That's just my opinion. Um, so those are there if anybody is interested in meditation apps. And then last but not least, environmental wellness. Time outside. So ironic that that was the question at the beginning of today's session. Um, I wanted to share these, these fun facts, um, especially knowing that I was talking to mostly women today. Um, I figured I would share these because I don't know a single woman in my life that wouldn't want any of these things to happen. Um, lowers blood pressure, reduces stress-related hormones, improves your mood and focus, and supports graceful aging. So I think we should all be spending time outside. Um, so this is something environmental wellness that can, can really fill your cup by doing spending time outside. Um, it doesn't have to be for an hour. It doesn't have to be doing anything strenuous. It can be 
sitting on your front porch reading a book. It can be walking the dog. It can be walking to get your mail. It can be walking to the post office to drop off mail. Um, it's a little chilly out today in my opinion, but I dropped some packages off this morning that I probably could have walked this afternoon down to the mailbox if I had coordinated my day better. So spending time outside is another way um, that you can get a little added benefit for your, for your wellness routine. My super tip, if you take nothing else away from today, combine dimensions of wellness for self-care. Don't think you have to do 7,000 things during your day and fit one in each of those categories. Um, combine different things, physical wellness and environmental wellness. Go for a walk outside. There's two dimensions. Um, like Kathy said, emotional and social are often combined. If you're hanging out with friends that you trust and care about and you're talking to them about your emotions, there you go, pinpoint those together. Occupational and financial are often connected that they probably support each other most often. Um, different things like that. For me, physical and social are kind of connected just because of where I, where I work out and where I coach um, is also my community. Um, so just different, different things like that, layer them. Um, don't think that it has to be this big extravagant thing where you have to do five things a day for your physical wellness and five things a day for emotional and five things for spiritual. It doesn't, and they can be quick. That five minute journal is a really good example of something that can be quick. It can be five minutes. Um, and for you doing that journal, if that's something that you love, um, I'll use that as an example because it's five minutes. It seems manageable. That might be something that as you do it, you find that that's fulfilling for you spiritually and emotionally. That's fine. There's no rule that something only has to fit into one category. Um, it can fit into multiple. So that's my super tip. And then I want to remind you of what self-care is. So giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. So all of these things are meant to get the best you. This isn't to, to fix you or to have a new you. Um, I think one of my least favorite sayings is new year, new me. Um, it's not a new you. It's a best you. It's the best version of you. It's a better version of you than yesterday. So doing things that get you there. And that brings us to our little challenge. So my challenge to you is choose one of those dimensions of wellness or it doesn't even have to fit into a dimension of wellness and choose an activity you're going to incorporate into your daily life for yourself for the next three weeks that you're going to do for self-care and then drop it in the chat box. Write it down on a sticky note. I want you to drop it in the chat box first because I want all of us to see it. <laughs> And the reason we're doing three weeks is it takes 21 days to form a habit. I'm all about habits right now. I'm reading The Atomic Habit. I don't know if anybody's read that book before. It is great. I highly recommend it. Um, they also talk about habit stacking, stacking habits on top of each other um, to make more time in your day. Um, I see five-minute journal, dance. I love that. April, if you have, if you offer dance lessons, let me know because I got a wedding in nine months and I cannot dance. <laughs> Short walk. Ooh, Atomic Habits has an audio book. I need to download that. Five minute journal, five push-ups a day. I love it. Finish devotion plans on the Bible app. I love the Bible app. That's a really good app. 10 minute meditation, five minute journal. Amazon should give me commission off of this five minute journal is what they should do. <laughs> 15 minute walk. Eat vegetables every day, yes. Morning devotional. Daily gratitude. Quick outreach to at least one sister friend each day. That's awesome. That's a really good one too. Oh yes, somebody else did tell me Brene Brown did a podcast with the author of Atomic Habits. Talk about two awesome people on one podcast together. <laughs> awesome. As you keep throwing these in the chat, 
I want you to start thinking about how you're going to be successful implementing these habits or implementing this activity that you're talking about. So for example, Andrea said, eat a vegetable, eat vegetables every day. Cool. What vegetables are you chopping up tonight so that they're ready in your fridge tomorrow for you to eat? Because I know I'm way more likely to eat the vegetable if it's already cut up for me and not if the whole cucumber or the whole pepper or the whole whatever is sitting in the refrigerator. Baby carrots are the easiest because they're already in baby form. Um, establish email boundaries. Yes, Miss Tammy must send my fiance works at Elon and we'll go visit Miss Tammy and make sure she's establishing her email boundaries. <laughs> she said that she put a thumbs up. She, she just wants him to come visit. <laughs> Practice a musical instrument. I love that, Bob. That's awesome. These are great ideas, everyone. Now you've thrown them in the chat. You don't have access to the chat after this, I don't think. So I want you to write them down for yourself and tell someone, tell a friend, tell a coworker, text it to your partner at home, somebody that's gonna hold you accountable. I would love to hold all 36 of you, 35 of you accountable for your, for your activity. Um, I just don't know that I have the capacity to do that, to be honest, but I think these are all awesome and I wanna help set you guys up for success. So if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, feel free to either throw them in the chat, um, unmute yourself, ask away. Um, I'm an open book. I don't know that I have the answer to everything, but I'm happy to answer questions. And then I'm going to throw my email up here on the screen as well. Um, some of you have access to my phone number, my Facebook, things like that, but I'm definitely happy to connect with anybody on this Zoom for um, further discussion after this as well. But any questions or comments, concerns? Yeah, so I want to just add um, that your videos on when we did the spin biking at home just added to my well-being that I was able to bike for my home. And when you did the two or three classes you recorded, it's just like, you know, the sense of community we had. It sure added to my well-being, my fun, and I have so much gratitude for that. It just made an impact. So thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, I don't teach spin anymore right now, but I loved during COVID, I did get to teach from home. So I have a couple of recorded spin classes, which was really fun and challenging to set up a camera at home and record and teach to my guest bedroom. But um, no, it was fun. That's awesome. I'll share this. This is Meredith Edwards. One of our local judges um, handmade, I don't know if everybody can see this, it's a little gratitude notebook. And if you're having a hard day, you can flip through and this is his handwriting and he's written little gratitude quotes that you can go back and reference. And I keep mine on my desk. Um, and he often checks in with me and makes sure that I'm doing my self-care and stuff like that. So I really appreciate that. That was a really thoughtful gift. That's awesome, especially from a judge who has a job that I'm sure he needs to practice a lot of gratitude and patience too. <laughs> right, I'm sure. Sam, I love the um, what you talked about um, with combining dimensions of wellness. Um, like the emotional and, and spiritual with the journal and the emotional and physical with like walking with a friend and talking. I really love that. I think that's a really helpful way for me to think about it. It doesn't have to be some grandiose thing in each dimension because I'm not going to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, as much as I would like to say I would, I, I'm not. So I, I really like the idea of maybe even being intentional about finding things that hit multiple dimensions at a time. Um, that way, I think it's more realistic. So that was really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. No, that's, I find it way more manageable when you can find things like that, that that was another good example, walking and talking with a friend. Um, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone for a lack of a better uh, term, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not gonna, it takes me an hour to do something. There's very few things that I'll do for a whole hour. <laughs> 
Sam, these are great reminders. Um, I think everybody needed a dose of self-care today, so we can actually count the, the time we've spent together, I think, <laughs> as part of this, this wellness stack. Um, does anybody have any more questions that they'd like to ask? All right, well, we will, um, Kate, can you put up our screen? There we go. Um, first, we wanna thank Samantha for being here today and giving us all these great reminders for how we really need to take care of ourselves better. Um, thank you each for being on the call today. It's really good to see the number tick up and uh, we know this definitely is a hot topic. Next month, uh, Shanice Sellers is a financial advisor, but she's also director of the African American Cultural Arts and History Center. She's gonna be our speaker. We're excited to hear her talk about her work. And I hope each of you will register again and bring a friend next month. It will be virtual. We keep crossing our fingers, hoping we're gonna get back to in-person. So fingers crossed for March. Um, but we're taking it a month at a time right now. Um, hope you all stay safe and healthy and well. And thank you for being here today. Thanks, everyone.